Hello beer tubers and welcome to another beer review with me Peter, the master of hoppets today. Checking out some more Omni Pollo Pastry Stout that we picked up on Beer Dome. Beer Dome, great Dutch web shop. They had a fairly decent release of Omni Pollo beer last year and we picked up almost all of it. And this is the, no we still have the Willet Barrel H Lorelei left, but otherwise this is one of the last ones. But yeah, link for the shop is down below. This is Omni Pollo's Barrel-aged mammut. So big, I think it's the first time I ever see a canned barrel-aged beer from Omnipoyo. Uh, but yeah, 540 centiliter can of 12% barrel-aged coconut vanilla hazelnut imperial stout. And they left out some of, the, they usually don't have too much info on the on the cans themselves, but, or, or bottles, but it's aged in a blend of Willet bourbon barrels and will it rye barrels, Buffalo Trace bourbon barrels, and also Buffalo Trace rye barrels. So this is a foray into blending, which is really cool. In terms of where this is brewed, I haven't been able to find out, to be honest. It's a brewed, oh, a brew and hub in Spain. Cordoba, Spain, interesting. So Omnipoy is brewing all over the place. But if you didn't know already, Omnipoyo is opening their own brewery. Things are slowly starting to happen. I think in May they're going to get their packaging equipment. They bought a church in Stockholm to open their own brewery and it's crazy. They're, you know, doing, they all the stuff they want to do is nuts, but they have a, I was talking to Henok the other day and they have a custom built brew house for making Imperial double mash stouts. They can get to 32 Play-Dohs automatically without having to add sugar, which is nuts. Uh, it's pretty much made for that and like IPAs and whatnot. You can of course also do lagers and for lagers, they've got loads of different lagering tanks or different like flat lined lagering tanks to do lagers. And they were doing like very long lagerings. Hennock learned a lot from, uh, from uh, Balkan who created the system. Uh, you know, learned how to do, they did a lot of sparring and like working with the engineers there, how to make this classic brew, make a brew house engineer to do modern contemporary brewing, which is really cool. So even though they have all this stuff going on, as I said, doing these aged lagers, hazy IPAs, so many things of course, but it's just like the, it just sounds crazy. And if the new releases from Omnipoyo as of late, the barrel age stuff is, you know, a progenitor of what's to come, I'm really excited. So it'll be fun to follow that once it, you know, gets up and running completely, hopefully in the next few months. But this one, again, is brewed not at uh, their facility in in the church because it's not completely up and running yet, but brewed in, in Spain. And you got the mix of barrels here, and it's just 100% sure to check out we've got every ingredient. Yeah, coconut, vanilla, hazelnut, it's just the same here on the side. So yeah, I'm hoping this is gonna stick to the same level as Carême and uh, Andromeda and the uh, Four Roses, uh, uh, Noah. That, you know, those were amazing beers. So yeah, let's check out Mammut. I have a friend on YouTube, oh, on Instagram you might know called Hopskull Beer Guide and I know he loved this one, so we'll see. You know, usually with pastry stouts, I don't like them if they're too fake. And Hannah has also said like a lot of the stuff they're doing now and they're going to be doing at the church, it's going to be more balanced and real. It's not going to be the same, you know, crazy intense flavoring and palate fatiguing stuff, which is awesome. I really enjoy that. So yeah, let's check this one out. Poor is a pitch black color. Next to no head, it fizzed away really quickly. I can see a lot of oil in the glass. So we definitely got a lot of nuts uh, and coconut and whatnot in here. Usually when you get beers like this with all these ingredients, the head just dies and it looks like this, it pancakes because there's so many fat, fats and oils in these ingredients. But yeah, otherwise it looks nice. Let's check out the aroma on the mammoth of a stout here. Yeah, really coconut, but also really marzipan -y. Uh Loads of that. Like one of the things that's really interesting, and I think it's one of the challenges as a contract brewer, is like you have a vision and you maybe you root it as a home brewer, and then you try to in, you know, encompass that vision with a contract brewer and have them try to do your vision. I think that's why a lot of contract brewers also in the long run end up with their own brewery where they can really work themselves on doing the products. Because oftentimes you get a very nice product, but maybe it's not like the 100% thing you wanted. And it won't, there must be a lot of like Skype calls or phone calls or whatever, and messages, emails just to get everything right. 
But it, yeah, this smells nice. Very coconutty, very vanilla. -y. It doesn't smell too fake. It doesn't smell fake at all. It smells pretty legit, but it's not got the same heft and sludge as the, the bottle releases they released from Dugas. The uh, Carême and Andromeda and all that. Yeah, but mostly like big time coconut. I'm not getting much hazelnut. And big time vanilla, especially like vanilla pod, that like almost like dark fruity vanilla thing. But man, I love that Omnipoi is going on to doing more real ingredient stuff. It's reminding more of like, you know, uh, Moxa or uh, Jay Wakefield or Bottle Logic and some of these kind of American brewers and, and the ways they do these kind of beers. In terms of barrel character, simply there, there, there is like this really nice fudgy, big time vanilla barrel character. I think the, the, the bourbon barrels really shine more so than the rye, but actually there is some spiciness to it underneath everything. It smells a little bit boozy, but otherwise it smells quite nice. Let's check it out. Cheers. Thanks to Beer Room for the Beer. Mmm. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, it tastes real. That's the big thing. It's to the sweeter side, uh, but I don't think it's too sweet. Man, there's a lot of vanilla. Like really, like almost like vanilla frosting. It's almost like reminding me of a vanilla character you find in Fundamental Observation, but it's not as thick as some of the, you know, the other stouts they just released with like the creme and all that. Th those were like so thick. They were really, really good. World class. I think this is maybe early world class because the flavors are dead on and they're real. But I think it's just lacking a bit in like, or maybe just before. It's just lacking in the same like oomph and complexity of the base. But it's pretty dang delicious still. I mean, this is how I want these kind of pastry fried beers. Not like sweet and synthetic, but to the sweeter side, big and rich, but with the real, real ingredient. And the fun thing, I was at a point where I was thinking, yeah, you need some of the real ingredient, the flavoring to boost this craziness. And I think you need that with some ingredients, maybe like peanuts. You need like a peanut butter flavoring to make it real good and whatever. But when it comes to like vanilla and coconut, you know, that's what you, you need to use those ingredients as well. Also just to make it taste real. In terms of the hazelnut in here, I'm not really getting it. It's also, the CO2 maybe is a bit high, so it's a bit fizzy. Um, it's not thin by any means, but it's also not like crazy thick. It's quite creamy, and it's probably, you know, it's probably got a lot of residual sugar, but it's just like because of the beers we've had, you know, in recent times of this type. It's kind of like that milky coconut flavor, but the big thing for me is the vanilla. Huge vanilla and vanilla pod flavor, and it's like like this, almost like dark fruity vanilla because there's like so much vanilla flavor. And I'm, I'm guessing, you know, I, I think it's really from the pod itself and not the beans. You get like this um, vanilla uh, or yeah, yeah, like a dark fruity vanilla flavor. It's quite unique, and you, you I think you get that in a lot of hef the vanilla hefty beers with a lot of real vanilla. And again, the barrel character, you know, it's not the most complex barrel character. It tastes like a beer maybe that's been aged, I don't know, a year, maybe a little more in the barrel. It's not like the same depth and, and depth of woodiness and whatnot. It's like, it's like just like, it's straight kind of fudgy bourbon, not like big complex wood. And also, you know, the rye is a bit there. There's a hint of spiciness, but it's not like a hefty complex barrel character. It could be aged longer. I don't know, but it just, it's not got the same level of complexity as the others. And also in terms of mouthfeel and everything, yeah, it is not like the thickest, but it does leave that sticky gloss on your lips, very coating. And also it's not all sweet fudge crazy pastry. There's a stouty base that's like slightly charry, but mostly chocolatey. So I'm thinking like it tastes like they use mainly chocolate malts in this, maybe just a touch of darker malts because it's to the sweeter, fudgier side more so than um, than roasty, even though there's a bit of a roast character, especially on the aftertaste, almost like a bit of soy sauce as well. <laughs> soy sauce? What was that? I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's very good. It kind of almost reminds me of a cycle beer, really. We had a few cycle beers recently, Brett and I, and it's in, in the same ballpark, but it's really nice. Uh, I'm thinking early world class. I'm just debating, is it really just like straight there or just 
you know, like if this line on the table here is world class over here, like this world class is either just on the line or just before the line. So maybe I'll give it a 94. And uh, also just because I really enjoyed the others a bit more, but it's it's really good. This again, it's showing that Omnipoyo is going back on track with really awesome, big, stouty, barrel aged beers and whatnot. And then, you know, they're gonna do awesome lagers and things like that. I had their collab with Campa Bavaria, Campa Bavaria, which is a company that also has Balkan, it's a Balkan brewery pretty much. They did the, the Swedish Apprentice in English. It's got the Swedish Learning. A fantastic Hellas. We have a review coming on that soon as well. I haven't reviewed it yet, but I already had it and it was fantastic. I tried it with Brett. So, you know, I love that they're doing all these things. But yeah, this was another long video. Let's wrap it up. But yeah, 94, let's say that. For uh, Omnipoyo Barrel Aged Mammut. Very nice. If you guys did not have a chance to try this, I, th I think you can still scour something out, some of this out. But if you haven't had Karem, go on Omnipoyo's web shop and buy some, because that was nuts. And they still have it, which is crazy. So hop on there if you want to try it. And yeah, thanks a ton to Beer Dome for the beer. And as always, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And ring the bell, there we go, for future notifications about videos. And yeah, thanks to Beer Dome. Check them out. Link for the shop is down below. And we're going to say cheers in some delicious, I think, yeah, pastry done right. And see you guys in another beer review.